Okay, here is one uh, a game that I played um, at the website let's play chess.com. It's a correspondence chess game and I was playing black here and um, we got this Nimsu Indian defense that's one of the defenses that I like very much to play with black pieces and my opponent chose for the classical variation queen to c2 and here he played immediately e4 that's a well very active and aggressive um, move normally people play instead of e4 they play a3 and then this is exchanged here immediately but in the game he played e4 so let's do that like this I played d6 to prevent his e pawn from advancing to e5 and now he played a3 I took, he took back with the pawn he cannot take with queen of course because then I can take on e4 with my, with my knight now he plays, uh, I'm sorry, I play e5 he played bishop to d3 here, of course, playing d5 is not good because of the weakness of this uh, square on c5. I can later play knight to d7 and knight to uh, c5. So, here he played bishop to d3, developing and putting his bishop and queen in the same diagonal towards h7. Although, right now, there is a pawn on e4 blocking this, but in the future, this can be interesting knight to c6 the main idea in this kind of positions with the Nimsu Indian by the way is to play later b6 bishop to a6 attacking the c4 pawn and then going with the knight to a5 attacking this c4 pawn so let's say that um, on a positional uh, point from a positional point of view uh, the weakness of white is this double pawn here and the uh, disadvantage for, for black is that he has uh, given away his bishop pair so that's the, uh, the compensation knight to e2 b6 cancels bishop to a6 and now he plays f4 so white is advancing his pawns trying to get more pressure in the center and preparing some things on the king side and here I played immediately knight to a5 and that is actually not a very good move it's uh, normally here knight to d7 is played but this is something that I discovered uh, much later when I actually the game was already finished and I reviewed it with the uh, use of um, some databases and I found that in, in, in this position actually knight to d7 is played the reason for that is that the logical move knight to a5 like I played now in the game um, leads to a weakness after f takes e5 d takes e5 and now bishop to g5 is a very strong move pinning this knight on f6 so later uh, white can simply take on f6 and I have to take with the g-pawn back because of this half-open f-file so then there are many weaknesses that arise in the, uh, the, the king's position of black now because of this um, idea is actually not very good to play knight to a5 but the correct move is knight to d7 here to prevent this bishop g5 idea but anyway in the game I did play knight to a5 and my opponent didn't play here bishop to g5 he played d takes e5 now I went with my knight to d7 and he played bishop to f4 defending this pawn on e5 now I took on c4 takes, takes, and now he played e6 so he's now solving this problem of this other double pawn on the e-file by exchanging one of these pawns uh, and when I say exchanging, well actually he's sacrificing temporarily a pawn here on e6 because after this move f takes e6, he plays queen to a2 attacking my knight if I remove my knight then he will take with my with his queen on e6 with check and the position will be better for white so what I did here is I played b5 defending my knight and then he played a4 attacking the defender I played a6 defending again b5 and he took and then I took again and now he 
exchanged a queen and a rook by taking on a8 because of the fact that my queen is has a task here to defend the c7 pawn that is attacked by the bishop on uh, f4 so that means that after exchanging here queen takes a8 queen takes a8 rook takes a8 rook takes a8 the pawn on c7 can be taken bishop takes c7 and we got this position actually this is the start of the of an end game um, that looks equal but actually here there was a possibility here for black to win the game very fast and I, I honestly I didn't see it I didn't even consider it and that is, is actually something interesting that when I saw this position on the on the on, on the board I actually immediately started thinking in the the way that I'm used to think and that is actually very positionally I was thinking okay I have my rook on this open A file and I can put my rook on the second rank and that can be important because later my knight can go to E3 I'll show you with the arrows move the rook here move the knight here if this knight leaves then I have an attack on G2 with both pieces so the idea of rook on the seventh rank or or on the second rank uh, that's what all my thoughts were about what I didn't see is that I could actually here have trapped white's bishop by playing e5 if I would play e5 here then the bishop can has nowhere to go all the squares are taken and then I'm threatening rook to c8 and then capture simply this uh, this bishop but well I didn't see this in the game and I played the logical idea of um, rook to a2 now knight to d4 attacking the e6 pawn I advanced this pawn and the knight went to f5 rook e2 attacking the e4 pawn he gives a check here on a7 attacking my king my king goes to h8 and now he plays rook to d1 attacking my knight on d7 now I cannot move my knight because then he gives a terrible check on d8 so what I did is I found here a, 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 a small tactic and that is that I can take now on g2 with my rook because of this following knight fork on e3 so rook takes g2 now if the king would take here then I have this fork to regain the rook so wh what he did he, he played king to h1 and now I could go back with my rook to block this d file rook e1 defending the e4 pawn and now knight to c5 attacking the e4 pawn rook b1 I took on e4 and he took on b5 threatening of course this uh, back rank mate so safety first I gave my king some air by playing h6 now knight g6 followed with king goes to h7 and then he took this pawn on e5 and here actually I was thinking in this in this part of the game constantly how can I use my knights to attack his king because my rook is placed on this second rank how can I attack the king how can I try to control this g1 square the only escape square for the white king and, and, and how can I give one more check to, to threaten checkmate but I, I couldn't really find many things uh, many many forced uh, ideas um, but later in, in a few moves later then a, a certain uh, mate pattern uh, arises and it's a, actually a very beautiful one I took here now on c3 the rook went to c5 and that is actually n not a very not a good move because now I have this sudden tactical idea of playing my knight to e3 threatening checkmating one with rook to a to uh, d1 now to prevent this he played h4 but now I could go with my knight the other knight to e4 I am attacking this rook on c5 but I, I also I have a very dangerous threat and that is to give check with my knight on g3 
and that the king will have to go to g1 and then my rook can give checkmate on g2 and this is actually what happened in the game he played my opponent played a rook to a5 I gave this check here now king to g1 and now my rook could go to g2 with checkmate so I I actually was, was very happy with this last part of the game because when I reached and let's say let me go back some moves when I reached um, let's say this this end game I thought this, this was going to be a, a long end game and I actually couldn't imagine at this point f uh, yet that we could get this kind of uh, interesting tactical ideas in um, attacking each other's kings and with this beautiful checkmate with the two knights and the rook